What's going on y'all? I'm Czar, and in this video we're going to be reviewing Rode's broadcast slash podcast lineup of microphones. And that's going to consist of the Rode PodMic, the Rode Procaster, and the Rode Broadcaster. So in this video I'll be speaking into each one of these microphones, giving some product description as well as some backstory on why I purchased each one of these microphones. We're also going to hear some files played back that I recorded in Studio One so we can hear the immediate difference between these three. And the mic pre that we'll be using for this is the Craneborn Audio Camden EC1. Alright, let's get started. All right, we're going to start with the Rode PodMic, which is a $99 dynamic broadcast microphone. And this was released in 2019, so this is Rode's newest uh, broadcast style mic. And for all of these mics, we will be using the Rode uh, WS2, which I guess WS just stands for windscreen. But funny though, this says that this is uh, made for or compatible with the Rode NT1 and NT2, which are large diaphragm condenser microphones. But... These work great on all of the mics that we're going to look at today, uh, the pod mic, the Procaster, and uh, the Broadcaster, because all three of these mics, in my opinion, do a poor job at plosive rejection, uh, even though they say, well, I know the pod mic and Procaster says that they have an internal pop filter, but uh, definitely recommend getting the Rode WS2 if you're picking up one of these microphones. I'm going to put this on now. All right, we should have no more plosives now. Yeah, a lot better. All right, so the pod mic, backstory on this as far as for me, uh, I was not a fan of this mic on my voice, but I ended up buying six of them. One, because I got a really good deal. I, they're $99. I think I got, uh, for buying six, I think I got them for uh, like 85 or 84 or something like that. I think I got about 15% off through uh, BSW at the time. And the reason I bought six is because my podcast, the Faders Up podcast, we had a episode where we were going to have two guests on. And uh, at the time, the four co-hosts or four hosts that we had, it would have been a total of six of us. And this was right before COVID hit. I got the six mics, COVID hit, and we haven't been in the studio since recording the podcast. Uh, by the way, if you haven't checked out the podcast, definitely check it out if you're into pro audio, Faders Up podcast. But... Got the six mics, uh, haven't used them all, never used them all because we didn't go back in the studio to record. We've been recording virtually, which has been working out great. And I sold one and got the PreSonus PD-70, so I got five pod mics now. And four of them I've kept down at the studio in case I record someone's podcast, and then one I have here at my studio. But that's how I, my backstory and how I ended up with the uh, pod mic. All right, let's read some product description here and then we'll move on to the Procaster all right let's see the pod mic is a broadcast quality dynamic microphone optimized for podcasting it has a rich balanced sound with an internal pop filter to minimize plosives and internal shock mounting to reduce vibrations okay so uh, one thing it says that it has balanced sound I find the pod mic to be a little lacking on the low end, uh, especially coming from the Procaster, which is what I've been using for years. And it says an internal pop filter to minimize plosives. Yeah. Not good at rejecting plosives, in my opinion. All right, uh, let's move on to the Rode Procaster. All right, so now we're on the Rode Procaster. And this is the one that I've used for the last uh, several years, if you've been following the channel. Uh, this has been my go-to broadcast mic. And I've recently been looking for a new broadcast mic because there's a lot of processing that I do on this mic to get it to sound the way I want. And when I'm recording vocals in the studio, my I guess, I guess you can say a rule that I go by is you know getting it right at the source and meaning that I'm... I don't want to have to process the vocal later or do a lot of processing to the vocal later. So I try to, you know, with the microphone, the mic pre, my signal chain, I want that vocal to sound so good that I don't have to do a lot to it later. And that's kind of the approach I want to go to with my with my broadcast mics. I want a mic that I don't have to do a lot of processing to. And um, right, we've been listening to it without the WS2. I'm going to put it on because these plosives are getting on my nerves. 
All right, so we got the WS2. Uh, with the Procaster, this one uh, was released in 2009, 2009. And I also have the, I think it's called the PSA, which is the shock mount you see here for the Procaster. And even this boom arm I'm using is Rode as well. I think the the boom arm is called PSA. I forget the model name. I think it's the only boom arm that Rode makes. But uh, Procaster, yeah, I've been using this for the last several years and been happy with it. Uh, but like I said, I do have some processing that I go through. I go through a channel strip, a RC, a Presonance RC500, where I cut some low mids and boost a little bit of high mids uh, to generally get this to sound the way that I want to. All right, let's read some product description with this. And I, I can't remember if I mentioned the price or not, but this one is $229 is the price for this one. Again, a dynamic broadcast uh, microphone. All right, the Rode, uh, the Rode Procaster is a professional broadcast quality dynamic microphone specifically designed to offer no compromise performance for voice applications in the broadcast environment. Featuring a tight polar pattern and tailored for voice frequency response, the Procaster is perfect for every application where a great sounding, robust microphone with superior ambient noise rejection is demanded. The Procaster features an internal pop filter uh, designed to minimize plosive sounds that can overload the microphone's capsule and distort audio output. Yeah, we've already said how I feel about the uh, internal pop filter. But, all right, that's the Rode uh, Procaster. And you should hear a clear difference between this one and the Pod Mac, uh, Pod Mac, Pod Mic. I do. Uh, to me, the Pod Mic is lacking on the low end, and to me, the Procaster is heavy on the low end. So, kind of the a flip flop of sounds there. Uh, also, will mention that uh, neither one, the Pod Mic nor the Procaster, has a, a high pass filter or any switches or anything uh, like that. All right, uh, let's move on to the last one, which is the Rode uh, Broadcaster. Okay, so now we're on the Rode Broadcaster. So this one is a broadcast condenser, so it does require phantom power, whereas the pod mic and the Procaster are dynamic, which of course does not require phantom power. And I've got read about 35 dB of gain on the EC1. Now, uh, I'm going to, of course, put the WS2 on this one, but I will say that the plosive rejection on the broadcaster is uh, a lot better to me than the pod mic and the procaster. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, WS2 on this as well. Okay, now, uh, this one is $420 uh, brand new. So, I ended up with this one because I got a really good deal on a used one. A guitar Center here in Nashville had this for $219, which was a really good price for a used broadcaster, in my opinion. All of the other used ones I saw were in the 300s, and I see why this one was $219. It is a little beat up, definitely shows signs of use. I mean, the ring around here, if you look at a picture of the broadcaster, it has a road broadcaster going around the microphone, and that is... Uh, maybe just from a lot of use been removed. It's not there. There's no branding on this microphone. Uh, but like I said, definitely show signs of use, but it does uh, work well. So I've, I've wanted to check this one out. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this one. And, you know, I saw that price and so I grabbed it to pick it up. So like I said, I've been looking for a broadcast mic that I don't have to do a lot of processing to. And this one was on the short list. And one thing about uh, the uh, broadcaster is it's got this little red light. Then when you do apply phantom power to it, it kicks on to let you know that it's on. Uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, there's also, uh, this did not come with any of the included accessories that was supposed to come with it. But um, that's fine because I'm not going to use them. But some of them, there is a, an adapter that you can use that can turn on an on-air light if you connect this to a console which I'm really curious how many people are actually using that with this mic, but it's, it's kind of cool, but uh, I don't know, not really necessary, not something I would use. Uh, this mic was introduced in 1998, so this mic is over 20 years old, uh, which I didn't know until I just did the research for this video. But uh, let's go ahead and read some uh, product description here. 
All right, the Rode Broadcaster is a large diaphragm end address condenser microphone designed to provide the ultimate performance for broadcast vocal applications. Its rich, full quality, tailored response has emphasized proximity effect that has made it a standard in radio stations, radio stations the world over. That sounded kind of weird. Uh, it is equally suitable as a voiceover microphone for film and television. The broadcaster features an internal pop filter designed to minimize plosive sounds that can overload the microphone's capsule and distort the audio output. In addition, the broadcaster's native 20 hertz to 20k response, a selectable high pass filter at 75 hertz is available which will prevent low end noise such as air conditioners and traffic from being recorded. The broadcaster features an innovative on-air indicator on the body that can be wired to an external activation by the channel on mute function on many consoles. If not connected to a console or switch, the indicator will remain lit whenever the microphone has power. Okay, so that red light I was referring to, I guess, is the same thing as the on-air button here. Lastly, it says the Rode Broadcast microphone is designed and made in Australia and covered by Rode's microphone's industry-leading 10-year warranty. Let's talk about that warranty. The Rode Procaster and the Broadcaster, I think, has like a two-year warranty when you buy it, but you can register it with Rode for a total of 10 year warranty. So once you register it with Rode, which I did register my Procaster, uh, I now have a 10 year warranty on it, which is pretty crazy for a microphone. I haven't, it says industry leading and definitely believe that because I haven't seen any other microphone offer a 10 year warranty. The pod mic, however, is capped at a two year warranty, but the Procaster and Broadcaster, uh, if you purchase them new, you can get up to a 10 year warranty with them. Okay, so that's a look at those three microphones. Let's jump into Studio One now, and we can hear them uh, where I've recorded in the Studio One going through each microphone, and we'll just compare them pretty quickly so you can hear the immediate differences. So we're still on the road broadcaster, which is the last mic uh, that we listen to. And before we listen to these tracks, I want to point out something that I forgot to mention, that additional shock mount that shock mount that can be purchased separately for the Rode Procaster that I have it's like a $40 shock mount it is not compatible with the Rode Broadcaster why Rode made a shock mount that is not compatible with their flagship broadcast microphone I don't know but uh, I knew this before purchasing the Broadcaster but it's something to point out because I do find it very annoying that I have a $40 shock mount made by Rode that does not fit a Rode microphone uh, so definitely something worth mentioning there all right let's listen to these tracks i've got uh the pod mic procaster broadcaster all recorded in the studio one here i'm going to play each one through and then i'm going to play them and quickly flip through them so you can hear the immediate difference uh we will let's give the broadcaster a different color here there we go all right so we got the pod mic at the top Procaster in the middle and Broadcaster at the bottom. We'll start with the pod mic. I'm speaking into the Rode pod mic going into the Craneborn Audio Camden EC1 mic pre at 52 dB of gain. Procaster. I'm speaking into the Rode Procaster going into the Craneborn Audio Camden EC1 mic pre at 52 dB of gain. And the Broadcaster. I'm speaking into the Rode Broadcaster going into the Camden EC1 mic pre at 35 dB of gain. All right, now I'm going to play it and I'm going to quickly flip between them. We're going to start with the Broadcaster and go up to the pod mic. I'm speaking into the Rode Broadcaster going into the Craneborn Audio Camden EC1 mic pre at 52 dB of gain. All right, one more time. I'm speaking into the Rode Broadcaster going into the Craneborn Audio Camden EC1 mic pre at 52 dB of gain. All right, so there's an example of all three of them there together. Uh, let's give some final thoughts on these microphones. Uh, starting with the pod mic, I do feel that it's lacking uh, low end, and I wasn't a fan of it on my voice because of that, and I think it's because I'm so used to the Rode uh, Procaster, and I feel like a lot of these dynamic broadcast mics at least that i've tried recently just lack that low end that i'm used to that i get with the procaster uh, that's such mics as the bayer dynamic m70 pro x i feel it was lacking low end the presonus pd70 i feel is lacking low end and just with using the, the procaster for years i just got used to that low end and it's kind of what i expect out of a broadcast microphone 
So you may say, why did I purchase six of these if I didn't like the sound of it? I don't hate the sound of it, but I still get a very usable sound with the pod mic and I can always process it further. I can add some low end and get it to sound the way that I want. Now I will say this about the pod mic, even though I'm not in love with the sound because of the lack of low end, I do think when you compare the pod mic to these other $99 broadcast dynamic mics, I do think the pod mic sits at the top of the list. And shout out to Rode because I believe Rode was the first one kind of in this space. I'm not saying they're the first one to do a $99 dynamic mic, but uh, just when the pod mic came out, it just took off immediately. I was supposed to buy it at GearFest, but... Um, and, and the road rep there told me that, you know, to go ahead and order them because they were short on them. I didn't listen. And then it, they were back ordered for months after that. So, uh, but it just took off when it came out. It, even though it lacks that low end is not overly bright. Uh, something like the Presonus PD 70, I feel is overly bright where sibilance can jump out and, Outside of the sound, the pod mic is built like a tank. It actually weighs more than the Procaster, which is interesting if you uh, look at them side by side. And another thing the pod mic has going for it is it is a really cool looking mic, in my opinion. Like if you're doing a podcast on camera, uh, the pod mic is a cool mic to show on there. It definitely uh, looks to be more than a $99 broadcast microphone. I mean, um, I think Audio Technica recently came out with like a $99 podcast microphone that when I first heard it, I was like, no, nah, that's that's not it. Uh, so from the broadcast mics in that price range that I've heard, uh, I definitely think the pod mic sits at the top of that list. So uh, the Procaster, the Procaster, I feel it definitely has more low end and I feel like it's kind of too much low end. When I process it, I take out some of that low end. Uh, maybe if it had a, a high pass filter on it, that would help. Uh, but I, I definitely cut some uh, low mids and boost a little bit of high mids to add a little bit of clarity to it. But um, overall, I do like the Procaster a lot. Um, I just feel like, um, and which was, I mean, it's been fine for me for years. I've just lately, I don't know, started to feel like it was just too boomy, like too much low end there. And the Rode uh, Broadcaster, I like this mic a lot more than I really expected it to. So, uh, kind of spoiler alert, I've got a couple other broadcast condenser mics on the way, which I'll be doing uh, videos on. And I was looking to compare these mics that I have coming, and I'm probably going to include the Rode Broadcaster in it now because... All of these mics will be broadcast condenser microphones. I think the sound that I'm looking for, more balanced, more clarity, I think I'm only going to get out of a broadcast condenser. So the broadcaster does sound balanced to me. It doesn't have too much low end. It's got the clarity. Like it has what I am looking for in a broadcast microphone. And I love it. I did not expect it to like it this much. I figured that it would just be okay, and I just couldn't pass up on that $219 deal. Uh, so I will be uh, comparing this, the Rode Broadcaster, to these uh, two other mics that I've got coming and seeing which one uh, that I like. And I really hope that it is in the works that, I didn't like I said, I didn't realize that the Broadcaster was uh, came out in 1998 it's definitely time for Rode to refresh this microphone. I'd get rid of this bump that's on the side that's preventing it from fitting in the shock mount. Um, I believe, I don't know what's all in that bump. I know the high pass filter is in there, but I feel like they can move that switch to somewhere else on the microphone. I, mean, I think they can do away with the bump, but this mic is definitely in need of a refresh because it also... I don't. I mean, for four hundred twenty dollars, it doesn't look like a four hundred twenty dollar mic. It's not as sleek looking as I would expect a four hundred and twenty dollar mic to be. Uh, and speaking of price, back to the Procaster two twenty nine is a good mid range price for a broadcast microphone. I think anyone who is looking at the SM seven B and doesn't want to pay the price tag on the SM seven B. I'm not saying that the Procaster sounds like the SM7B, but I think that the Procaster is a, a very 
very good alternative to an SM7B at about half the price. You know, uh, a lot of people use cloud lifters or fed heads with the SM7B. I have a cloud lifter and I've never had to use it with the Procaster um, or the pod mic as well. Uh, so definitely a plus for the Procaster. Back to the broadcaster though. Again, I definitely feel like Rode needs to refresh this microphone. Um, I don't know, at $420 maybe, I mean it's still in production now, so it's not like it's been discontinued, but I don't know, maybe they can, uh, with you know technology today, they might be able to make it a little cheaper maybe, so I don't know, we will see what happens, but there's a look at, the, at these three mics. All three of these mics are available at Front End Audio, and I will have a link in the description if you want to check these out. All right. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to continue to see content from me, then you know what to do. All right, any questions, comments, let me know, and I'll catch y'all next time. I invite you to check out my podcast, The Faders Up Podcast, a podcast about pro audio and beyond. Season three is now underway, and in this season, we'll be doing a lot of topics requested by listeners. So if you have a topic you want to hear discussed on the podcast, email us, DM us, or join us in our Facebook group, Faders Up Podcast, and let us know. And if you haven't checked out the podcast yet, I have a link in the description that'll take you to the page.